artistic creative content that uh, skirts the IP laws a lot more. And um, yeah, I think uh, in doing, I think it's important that we do more video. I mean, um, a lot of us have video cameras or carrying them with us, but how many instances have there been where there have been interactions with police and because we didn't have it charged at that time or didn't have space left on the camera at that time that people have run into issues. So using multiple devices, having multiple devices on you at every time and just having that be a daily habit is something that I think is going to uh, improve a whole lot and expose a lot more that isn't being caught right now. I have a question. Um, if someone is going to film the police, like say I'm by myself and I, I have a cat, I'm just supposed to point the camera at him while he writes me a speeding ticket or, um, you know, how does that work? Well, that's why multiple devices are great to have. For every device you have, it's like having another witness. It's like having, it's, it's even better than having a witness, because witnesses are fallible, the objective record can't be questioned. So that's why I advocate carrying multiple devices, if your cell phone can uh, live stream, that's even better. Um, having things go off-site, of course, is, is way better than having it on-site where it can be destroyed or tampered with. There's newer technologies where the SD cards have Wi-Fi built into them, so even if your camera isn't capable of that, you could have it transmitting somewhere to a separate device, or these are extra safety measures. Fortunately, I feel like those aren't all that necessary here in New Hampshire. I mean, police brutality isn't... We don't hear about the craziest stories here that you hear about in L.A. or New York or other major cities. Um, but at the same time, uh, it's since this is more of a place where people are stepping forward to do more uh, videography and documentation of police activities, we should be uh, advancing the technology and using it more, of course, to our advantage. So, yeah, multiple devices are great to have. Here's what pretty for him. There's going to be a lot of media there this year. Fox News has confirmed. Uh, the New Yorker has confirmed. The New Yorker is having a big thing about Bitcoin. Fox News, something is louder. Very loud. Oh, Fox News is. Uh, there's going to be a some sort of segment about Bitcoin that features the FSP producing for FSP. Um, social media team. We post a lot of the stuff on Facebook. So if you've ever read the Facebook page or. Um, seen a lot of stuff. You've probably seen stuff I've posted. Um, the, I also run the Twitter account, which... Um, Rob. Uh, <laughs> Christine. Uh, yeah, we've, we've, we've grown that a lot over the last couple of years, so... Um, you have over 45,000 yeah, followers? Yeah, we actually, we've grown it from like 3,000 something to almost 50,000. <laughs> We reach a lot of new people that way, so that that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today was um, social media and really how you guys in this room can promote the FSB. So, um, quick show of hands. New Hampshire how many became the first legislative chamber anywhere in the country to approve a bill that would legalize marijuana for use by anybody 21 and above. But that is not an insignificant achievement. Voters in Colorado and Washington voted by 55% to enact these kinds of laws, but as we know, politicians require a little bit more than 53% in the polls. They, they need uh, effective grassroots support. They need to hear from their constituents. They need to be educated. So first of all, thanks to all of you who have helped over the years educate your reps and make a difference at the state house. First staters have been heavily involved, libertarians have been heavily involved in every way. So thanks, it was 170 to 162. Woo! Woo! And it was closer than that because there were about seven votes or whatever. <laughs> the first vote, it failed by two, two. And they reconsidered it and then they overturned anyway. It's a whole bunch of confusing stuff I'm not gonna tell you about parliamentary procedure. <laughs> But it happened, it made the news, and it sent a message, I think, to, well, certainly to the Senate, to the governor's office, but also to other New England states, other states around the country, that this issue is an issue that politicians can take on without... And being able to on. give the, the light, to shine the light on the people behind the scenes really making changes and really helping the organization and the movement to grow is amazing. So we had that uh, strange little... Facebook campaign this week so that everyone now knows who Carrie is. Um, Mark Borden uh, kindly handed me the check for $510 last night. And um, 
I am going to take some props for getting in touch with Mark when I realized, wow, I could probably hit him up for 10 grand if I put this out on, you know, the main channels instead of just, you know, amongst us friends. And I contacted him and, you know, he has long days at the State House and he was like, oh, thank you so much for asking. Can we cap it? <laughs> um, you know, because we want to be good to the people who are good to us. But anyway, that little campaign has now inspired another donor to come forward and he's willing to donate five dollars for every signer we get between now and Liberty Forum up to 16,000 signers. So we can make three thousand five hundred dollars if we can get seven hundred and eight signers. That's a lot of signers. That is 35 signers a day. That is 25 signers above what we are currently averaging. We're currently averaging about 9 to 10 a day. It's because we have all these great legislative successes coming out of the State House. The historic marijuana vote was huge. We got over 100,000 views just on that on Facebook. So all of this is strategically working. So, signers. You said 10 a day. Yes. Signers. Yes, but we need to get 35 a day between now and Liberty Forum. We have 21 days to do that. So I am going to make an appeal here. First of all, if you want to be a matching donor, I will take other people who will match at $5 or at $2.5 or whatever. Let's see if we can get some momentum going on the fundraising side of it. But also front and center for everyone should be, who do I know? Whose arm can I twist? Where is my friend who's a little on the fence, but I think, you know, they might sign. Maybe you need to do it.